Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television! Yay! For the community, by the community. Hello, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah, the show about all things that make life great. Today, we're going to talk about getting ourselves organized, and I have invited with me here Christine Landino, who is a professional organizer, and she is going to help us get started getting organized. Welcome, Christine. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I think we all struggle with getting organized. Yes. So what, as a professional, what does it look like to be organized? What is our end goal? Well, contrary to popular belief, being organized isn't always being neat, tidy, or clean, although it often looks that way. Rather, being organized is being prepared so that you're ready to do what you want or need to do. And being organized is taking control of your time, your surroundings, and your life. So what I mean by that definition is, if you have children, right. obviously you're going to have toys that are around the room, but you can go into that room and know where things go, that things have a logical place. Okay. Um, so if you think about clutter as a delayed decision, it doesn't have a logical home, so it causes stress. So while being organized often looks neat, tidy, and clean, because mm -hmm. that often is the end result, the other part of it is that you can operate on a daily basis, but that when you go to clean up, things have a space, and they have a function, and they make sense. Okay, so you can be organized, but your house can look chaotic during the day, but at the end of the day... Right. It's easy to put things away and you can find them the next day. Right. It's not a source of stress to right. think about where things go. That right. includes mail, toys, clothes, putting away the laundry, okay. um, that it doesn't cause anxiety. Now, can you know, we ha you always hear about people who are, oh, they're so disorganized, they always lose everything. I mean, can right. anybody get organized? I mean, is it possible for all of us yes. to be organized? <laughs> <laughs> yes, everybody can do it. Okay. Um, but the things that people don't realize is so often that we're in a state of panic when we want to get organized that we don't take a step back and say, how did this all happen? Right. So without identifying the root causes of disorganization, okay. you wind up in circles right back where you started. So, so often clients will say, I've tried so hard to get organized right. and it works and then it falls apart and I'm right back where I started. And often it's because we don't take that step back and say, how did this become like this? Whether okay. it's a conversation with yourself, your partner, your spouse, your children, to take that step back to identify the root causes so that you put in a system that is specific for you and your functions. Okay. That, so now, that is the root. So you have a uh, clinical social working background, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like that probably plays into everybody's individual psychology, I guess, and, yes. and what'll work for them? Yeah, my, um, the way I approach organizing is definitely from a clinical social work perspective in that let's just not clean up and make it look right. Let's actually right. put in a system that is maintainable, that makes sense for you as an individual. And okay. that means sort of doing a needs assessment and bringing it back to saying, how did this all start? So that we okay. can correct what's not working through the system that we implement. Okay, so I have my little area in the kitchen. It's kind of my little office. Mm -hmm. And to me, I feel like I can find what I need to find. But someone else might walk in and say, this is a mess, you know, we should right. clean this up, or, how, you know, how do you find anything in this? Right. But is that still being organized if I can find what I need to find and it's my space? If you can find it, if you feel that you're efficient right. when you're finding it, then yes, that's all that matters okay. because you're the one that needs to maintain it and work with it. If okay. it's an area that your spouse or your partner also needs to work in, then you need to find common ground so that there's a system that works for both of you. Okay. Now, you said efficient in finding what you need to find. So right. it could be... Yes, I can find it, but it takes me 20 minutes. Exactly. So then that's not organized. Right. right. A lot of times people will say, I'll look, I'll, if I go into a, a professional office and I see piles and piles and piles, mm -hmm. oh, I know where everything is. Right. So I'll look for that, I'll, I'll test them. I'll find a piece of paper, I'll look at it, I'll put it back and I'll say, find X paper. And they can find it 10 minutes later. Right. I want you to find it in five seconds or less. Right. And then that, so really the goal is, Right. Set your system up. You can find things quickly. Right. You can put them back. You know exactly where they need to go. Right. And then it also sounds like, I mean, I have 
two children, I have a spouse, and we're all living in the same house, you need to make right. sure that we all are on board with the system? Correct, that it, all, that it works all for you, that visually, functionally, okay. and is it effective? And can you maintain it? Right, okay, so what, what are the biggest problems that people come, the most common organizational issues that people come to you with? Um, the, the biggest one is paper. Um, okay. which is understandable, in your lifetime, you'll get 49,060 pieces of mail, and one-third of that is junk, and that's for one wow. individual. So if you have four members in your family, that's a lot of mail coming yes. through the door. And I, I believe think, it. <laughs> yeah, um, and just not sure what to save, what to keep, right. how to deal with it. Schools send home a lot. Yes, If they you've do. got um, multiple children, they've all got different activities or programs, so how do you remember and deal with all that paper in a busy schedule? Um, so that's the biggest one is paper. Paperwork, okay. Um, and uh, the next one would be toys. Um, okay. We're so in you a, have children. Yeah, our society. Their is, stuff. Yeah, we have a lot of stuff. Um, yes. I'd say we're almost grappling with affluenza where we feel that if um, one child has one thing, we have to get the other. I have two children myself, so I definitely feel that yes. pressure. Yes. Um, so it's how to manage the, the, the toys, how to manage the clothes, right. how to manage the playroom. I'd say those are the two biggest areas okay. that I encounter as an organizer. So knowing that ahead of time, yes, we've we have a display <laughs> of um, various products that are going to help us deal with that and a little demonstration on sorting through my mail that I only collected over the last two days and it's and you a can hefty see pile yeah. right here on the table. So let's stand up and let's okay. walk through it. Should we start with toys? Why don't we start with toys? Okay. Um, the, the biggest thing to, to first say with toys is that okay. you want to look at the age of your children, meaning okay. if you have a baby or a child under two, you need to do the organization for them because you right. can control their environment. If right. you're hitting two and beyond, it's important to involve them because often okay. children have their own organizational patterns that are may maybe not be obvious to us. Okay. So you want to organize, one, by how they play and not how we think. And okay. second, we don't want to go in and violate their space and True. have them have an anxiety as to where things are. Right. Kids tend to hoard. It's not that they're going to hoard when they're older. They just happen to hoard because they love it, because they're collecting everything, because everything in their world is so important. Right. So it's important to set up an organizational structure for them that meets their needs, but also meets your needs okay. in terms of being able to keep it organized. But the end goal is, as they get older, that they can maintain it. So okay. the key is to set up something that works for them. So for the children that are less than two years, mm -hmm. You know, they're capable. I, I, th I think that, you know, an 18 month old is pretty capable of knowing this is where my, yes. my favorite Elmo doll goes. Yes. Um, but you're setting it up for them. Right. But then you need to make sure they know. Right. That you communicate it to them. Right. Right. Kids okay. like routine, and kids are also, um, they're not, they're dumpers. They're right. not going to put things into different categories. So, right. Um, it's important for them to see things, wh where their things are. So, oftentimes, okay. Um, when I'm working with a client, they'll say, I don't understand why I can't keep this playroom organized. So the first thing I do is I either go into their basement or I go into their closet and mm -hmm. I'll say, clean it up. And they'll say, what do you mean? That, that, that's stressful for me. And it's because it's not visually presentable. Okay. It has to be visually attractive for the kids to want to pick it up and to also know where their toys are. Kids are overwhelmed okay. with volume the same way we are if we go into our clothes closet okay. and it's packed. So statistics say that you wear 20% of your clothes 80% of the time. Right. The same is true for children's toys. They're playing okay. with three or four things at a time and not in a, a mountain of things. So okay. if you look at your toy room, you can pull out what they're playing with and look at the rest and say, have they outgrown it? Is there just too much here? You can rotate toys in and out. If you've spent a lot of money on a toy and you don't want to give it away, but they're not playing with it, either make it presentable to them so they can see what they have in an okay. organized fashion or bring it out because if you've spent money on it and they're not playing with it, it's clutter. Right. So you right. want to look at it that way. But then do you, do you involve them in that, that choice? I mean, I, I am totally guilty of, go, my children are going to watch this show so they're going to know that I do this, but <laughs> I am guilty of going into the room and deciding for them. I have not seen them play with this for two years. Yes. We're donating it. And yeah. I do it sometimes when they're not home because I don't want them to say, oh, but that's my favorite toy. Yeah. Well, you haven't played with it for two years. Right. So do you, you It's know. a balance. I think, okay. yeah, part of it is you do need to do some of it on your own. If you have any hesitation, you can 
put it all in a bag. I have some clients who just get nervous about throwing it out or donating right. it. Um, you can put it in a bag and put it in a closet, and if they don't ask for it in a week or two weeks or a month, get rid okay. of it. Um, okay. You know, shelters, right. Salvation Army. So along those lines, in okay. terms of products... Um, so these are the tools that are going to help to arrange, organize, categorize right. the toys. So, okay. Right. So back to visual presentation. Um, if we put some Barbies in here on yeah. a shelf, yes. we can see them. If right. we put the same Barbies in here, you don't see what's in there. So a child... Okay, so the difference is... Right. What's in here, we have no idea. We have no idea. Then in here... We can see from what the we have. Even from the side... Right. We know Barbies are living in there. Right. Okay. So the two things that you can think of is if you were to use this basket, you can use it, but on the floor where they can look into it and you maybe put all the balls in it. But okay. ideally you want things that are clear for okay. two reasons. They can see everything. And the other thing you can do is you can boundary set. So you can keep, she can have as many Barbies as she wants as long as they fit what's in here. Okay. So that was get one of my questions one. is, you know, you have a birthday, you get six sets of Barbies, or right now I feel like we're overwhelmed with stuffed animals and other, you know, just right. stuffed animals. Right. So, you know, and they all claim that they're, my kids claim that they're their favorite stuffed animal, we don't want to get rid of them, so there's right. a way to kind of manage that? There's a way to manage that, and um, given that your kids are a little bit older, you could say, well, which ones do you want to save? Right. Which ones do you want in your room? Okay. Which ones do you want in your playroom? And then you give them a basket or you give them an organizer and say you can keep as many as can fit in here and then we need to make some decisions. Okay. So okay. you can do it that way. You also want to look again at how kids play. So for example, my daughter is three and she plays with Barbies all over the house. Okay. So I'm not going to put Barbies in something that she can't tote around. Okay. So I purchased this and she can fit as many, she can fit literally like 14 Barbies which to me is That's plenty. That's a lot of Barbies. <laughs> but she can carry it. Right. And this is her tote to use around the house. Okay. Um, and she can fit whatever's in here, and, and that's what she can play with. Whatever doesn't fit in here doesn't get kept, so that when you go to clean up, okay, oh, my daughter's Olivia, put the Barbies back in your pink tote. Um, if she was doing Polly Pockets, put the Polly Pockets back in here. Okay. The other thing you can do is you can take bins like this and personalize them. Okay. So, at art supply stores, you can get the, the paint that's very thin, and you could write right. Polly Pockets, or you could okay. write crayons, or you could write um, balls, whatever it is. Okay. The more things are personalized for kids, the right. more likely they're to keep it organized. So along that note, there's toys that get misplaced. There's yes. extra pieces. Uh, Polly Pockets here is a great example of all these, these little things. Yeah, I, I, if we can get a good shot of the little itty bitty, I don't know what camera we're working on here, but the little itty bitty, teeny tiny shoes, you know, there's a little itty bitty hanger. I mean, it is insane how small this stuff is. Right. And, you know, it's like a vacuum cleaner hazard. <laughs> it, it is. It's a vacuum cleaner vacuum hazard. Cleaner heaven. And it's also a choking hazard if they're small children. Right. So what I always encourage parents is that if kids are playing with Polly Pockets, they're old enough that the mom or the dad right. or the caregiver does not need to be responsible for where the pink shoe is that's about an inch tall. Right. Um, you know, or, or wear the certain dresses that kids right. need to be responsible for their own things. Okay. So what you can do is, this is a great example, is, you know, they can see everything that's in here. They're going to yep. dump everything Polly yep. Pocket related. Yep. If a shoe is found that um, is on the floor and, and they don't know where it goes, you can create what I call is a misfits bin. So okay. they can write misfit toys or missing pieces. And anytime there's a missing piece from a game or a Polly Pocket right. or a Barbie shoe, it just gets put in here. Okay. So that serves two purposes. Is one, it keeps things organized. Right. It's also your go-to place if you're if the child is missing something, thereby ah. it's their responsibility, not the parents. And then once a week or once a month you go with your child and you find homes for it. What doesn't okay. have homes gets tossed. Okay, that's a great, you know, we've yeah. had random puzzle pieces around the yeah, house, it, we've it, had marbles, we've had all sorts of things. So any so and have them thing, make they then be able to see it, yeah. particularly small pieces, you want it containable, manageable right. for their size. Correct. My girls are a little bit older, so this right. is not, you know, these are right. not a choking hazard, they're just itty right. bitty. And you would have them personalize it. The more okay. they create it, the more they're going to keep it up. And okay. the other thing is to have a conversation with your kids. Right. Most kids don't care about things being neat or organized, so... 
whenever you attack organization with another family member, whether mm -hmm. it be a spouse or a child, you want to find out what what's what's going to make it tick for them. So, okay. um, what makes I, sense to what them? What makes sense for them? Okay. So, for my daughter, we had a conversation, and she's only three. And I said, "What's really important to you about these Barbies?" And she mm -hmm. said, "Dressing them." I said, "Okay, okay then let's." Let's make this for the Barbies and the clothes. Okay, so they're so, together, right? So if kids understand why they should keep something organized without using that word, right. they're more likely to keep it up. Yeah, because they say organized and they're they don't care. What, Mom? <laughs> yeah, I like my Barbies. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so we need to know where our Barbies are the okay. next time we play with them. The right. other thing is. Um, this needs to be done on a daily basis, but if there's logical homes for things, to clean up a room should take no more than five to ten minutes, or you have too much stuff, or the system isn't correct. Okay. And so if you find that point um, where kids still have some energy left to do this right. every day, so that yes. it's part of their routine. Right. So I often tell clients, you bring the kids home, they need to unwind, but before dinner, yep. there's usually a 15 minute break where you could say, okay, it's cleanup time. Right. And then the older they are, then there could be consequences associated with not, with not cleaning it up. Okay. Let's move on to paperwork. So we, okay. I know that's yep. big yep. for, you know, not everyone has kids, but everyone, everyone has, has paperwork. paperwork. And I, and so mail. I think the way we're going to do this is I collected two days worth of mail and stuff that came home from school. Mm -hmm. And maybe we can go through and sort and discuss how to manage these things. Yeah, so you can already see that two days of mail it's ridiculous. is ridiculous. And this isn't even all of it. <laughs> right. So th there's two things. One is, in, in terms of incoming mail, is a lot of times what people do is they'll have a bin and they'll just plop it down. Right. You're coming They're home, inbox. They're inbox. Right. So, the disadvantage of that is that horizontal piles build up, and then now when you go to address it, you've got to go through all the right. different things. It could get tucked, lost. Right. right. So okay. the subconscious mind is a very powerful thing, and it now becomes something you don't want to address because you don't it's want to deal with it. Okay. Versus vertically organizing it. So okay. So you always want to think vertical. Um, so here, if I had not addressed this mail for two days, when you have children or you're working all day, you're coming home, you're right. tired. Most people don't go through their mail on a daily basis. So you want a system that works with your lifestyle. Okay. This is a great one. There's many different systems. Okay. Um, obviously this isn't customized for you, but right. it's an example right. that if I didn't look at my mail for two days, I'd have to go through these piles versus if I got the mail and I sorted it into um, what we have here is immediate, okay. bills to pay, to read, to file, and calendar of events. Okay. And this is just an example. Okay. So then I would say I wanted to pay the bills on Tuesdays. I'd pull, my, pull the bills to pay, or I just needed to read something, or you get bank statements or right. um, papers from your, your stock or your brokerage. You just need to file it, insurance right. papers. You don't necessarily have to look at it. So it can go right in there. Okay. But what you immediately want to do on a daily basis, if possible, is when you have that moment Sort at through. the end of the night is just take out the junk. Okay. So I don't know if you, have you already done that with this? I have not. Normally, okay. I actually, I, this year have been trying to, the first thing I do is keep it, don't keep it. And then right. what I don't want, the junk mail, the catalogs, that stuff, right. I put right in the recycle bin. Right. That's great because that's quick. And then when this is customized for you, so if you have children, you would have a folder for your children as well. Okay. And I often tell clients to have an immediate for you yep. and then an immediate for your kids. So if okay. kids are coming home, you want a routine of emptying their backpack and getting those papers that need to be okay. signed or reviewed. So right. you may so have things a, that need attention now right. within the next 24 and hours. And have a place okay. so that once they're in bed, you could pull okay. to, you know, to review or the kids' action for immediate. So just okay. pull out the All junk right. so and we'll see. This junk bill. Okay, so bills to pay. Junk. Now, things like this I struggle with because so we, we were getting a magazine for the kids. Right. I felt like they weren't reading it, so we let it expire. Now mm -hmm. they're saying, why am I not getting my magazine? So I've got okay. another renewal notice. Um, I'm not sure if I want to do it or not do it. So what do I, I end up having okay. sort of a holding pile. What do I do with my holding so stuff? So it can go into immediate, so then when you review, you, could, you may also have a folder that says to consider. Okay. So that you, you're not, your immediate file is not junking up, but okay. it's sort of a delayed... Right. I don't action. want to make the decision right now, but right. I want to revisit this and when I can think so about So if it. you okay. if you see that you start to get a lot of that, you would have a delayed folder or okay. you know you want to personalize them, but that would go in so here. Bill. 
bills go in bills. Now this is a yeah. uh, tax, end of your tax statement. Right, so, so you need to file it. Filed, right? And you'd file it with your taxes. So now ha here we have some kids' papers that have come home, you know, an announcement for some camp, um, some homework stuff to go over with my daughter. Okay, so here's two, if I can take these. Yeah, this is probably junk. We'll decide that's yeah, junk. This is a great thing. This is stuff that you've got to do. Do you need right. to do this on a daily? Yeah, just during the week. Okay. Right. So you would have a folder with your daughter's name. Okay. And you would have a time each night where you would pick up that folder with her it. and review okay. it. Then when you get things like calendars, things that you yes. need to refer to often, again, you want to think vertical. This is one junk. example. Okay. Um, this is magnetic, so it can go on the fridge. It can also be mounted onto the okay. wall. And it really is a... It really is great because you can do front and back. So there's really 10 options. Okay. But you can see I have some calendars. Yep. Um, things that I need to refer to, but I don't want it taking up my space. Right. But I need to have and access to it. And you don't have it in a flat folder because then you have to flip through Right. It. So the, the, okay. what I have is contact sheets for important names and numbers. I'm in a mom's group, so okay. I have their information. Um, Hall High School, my daughter's in the so that's program there. So that's the information okay. I need for that. And then my gym schedule. Gym schedule. So, okay. And you would customize this for you. Sometimes people do takeout menu, a contact sheet for sitters. Okay. So things um, you refer to frequently. Sports schedules. Okay. Yeah. Like and then where you can renew it. Go. You get this is January's uh, right. school lunch menu. So then you can just, when you get February, you take January out. Right. Exactly. You, February would, you would update in. these. So what about, what is your thought on bulletin boards? Because that's where I put mine. Bulletin boards are actually great. It all, okay. again, comes down to what works personally for you. Okay. Bulletin boards are great for if you're visual yep. and you need to actually see the piece of paper versus having it in a right. file, you could have a bulletin board that on the top just says needs attention and you literally could tack up whatever would go in here, say this was immediate, okay. and plop it on the bulletin okay. board and you just go to that bulletin so as board. As long as you that works for you. Again, that's kind uh, again, of what works for you. Right. It's okay. So it's not about the, the product looking cute or... Right or nice or blending into your right. your countertops. You actually want it function. Okay. You, the reason for the colors is because your eyes are drawn to it. Right. Versus if they were manila and they blended in with your environment, you'll walk right by. Right. Well, and I have to say, I have, I go through this stuff and I have what I call my inbox and I do have some folders. I have a folder of, you know, sort of pending stuff and then right. I, you know, I have birthday invitation, whatever it might right. be, but it is flat and I do have to so right. through it. And then on my table, I have this pile of stuff. Even though I've gone through it, right. it's organized. Right. This would be easier to find this would stuff. Be and you can also get things that are wall-mounted. So if you have artwork, you could just put all the artwork there until you're ready to deal with right. it. Um, you just want to keep thinking vertical. Junk. Junk. Now, this, there's no artwork in here, but t a lot of times we do get art. This is schoolwork. So, um, so real quick, I wanted you to talk about. Oh, okay. Just real quick, we're almost out of time. Okay. This I'll is a sort this later. All right. This is a great organizer for artwork and memorabilia. Okay. Artwork is a really stressful thing for parents. Yes. When it comes home, it's new. It's great. Don't make a decision on it right away. Right. Have a place in your home where you can hang up the artwork. Right. So the, the reason for that is twofold. One is you're not ready to make a decision on it. Right. Neither is your child. So if you hang it up, either you can get rolled cork board, home assault, you can do a clothesline in the mm -hmm. room or playroom, the fridge, wherever you want to hang it up, hang it up, enjoy it. When that space that you hang it up gets filled, then have the child say, you know, ask your child, what do you want to save? Have them make the decision okay. and you quietly discard it. And the great thing about this is it's again, boundary setting. Right. You only can save so much per grade, yeah. and there's six slots, so kindergarten through sixth right. grade. Right, so as much as fits in here, if you yeah. can stand it. <laughs> yeah, it, which would Pull be out like the this. rest. But, right. And the other thing is, uh, if you don't want it hung up and you can't have anything out, just put it in, and it goes in chronologically, right. and you can see that that one scribble that was so great, well, there's ten more now, so pick right. two. Right, so just pick one. Because you're saving right. this for in 20 so years you can to revisit say, it. here's what yep. you did. Um, and then it's stored and ready to go for when they're older. That's great. So it's, again, having the right systems that, that work. Okay. So we're almost out of time. If you were to leave us with four, five tips, the most important things, what would you, just to recap what we've talked about? I think that the most important things is to know that, that you can do this, that you can get organized. It's possible, even yes, for the it's disorganized. Possible, but okay, that it, it's great. There's hope. But to not get caught up in, in the products, to first okay. say, how did this happen? Right. Is it just having the kids? Is it too many toys? Is it 
not having the right system in place, like what right. caused the disorganization okay. or the clutter to begin with, and then realize it's going to take time and it's going to take behavior modification to right. make those adjustments. So you need to make the habit, you need once to make you the have habit. it set up, of doing it daily, right. weekly, whatever and that works. You've got to maintain it. It's not yes. an organizer coming in and making it great. It's actually you maintaining right. it. Um, so the bulk of the work is really maintaining the system you set up. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. That's great. I did want to make one plug for reusing. This is a reused, I guess some sheets came in here. This is a reused thing. So you don't necessarily even have to buy the clear see-through things. Right. Um, you know, they work. You're, you're yep. reducing what you're sending out. And I always recycle yep. my junk mail. West Hartford does collect um, office paperwork and junk mail. Yeah. So um, I always try to do that. Yeah. And um, this has been great. Thank you so Thank you for having much me. for coming. I think this is really very helpful. Okay. Um, if you want more information on getting organized, at the end of the show, we will um, have some phone numbers that you can, you, you can look at and a website um, to go to to get more information on getting your life organized. Um, as you can see, there are lots of different approaches to doing it. Pick the best one for you. Um, thank you, Christine, thank for, you for joining us. Me. I appreciate it so much. I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. And until next time, live a great life. Bye-bye.